Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what I'm going to be covering is how to make a recipe book and we're going to be taking a look at that today and all the minor stuff that you can basically do with the built-in recipe book into M Creator. So definitely tune in after the intro and I'll show you how it works. So let's take a quick look. So we have a basic GUI that we have for the items. You can't actually take out of these particular slots because they're not designed to do that. Well, I've disabled the player interaction with them so we can't actually get the items. That's important. So we can't basically make an infinite source of um, valuables or anything like that. Uh, another thing that we have up here is the page um, basically the uh, custom text of what we're basically crafting. In our case, we've basically defined a localization that we can basically translate into other languages and stuff like that. I'll be covering that part in a little bit too. Another thing that you might want uh, notice is we have a custom background. Now this isn't the same for every page. Every page is different. We can actually customize images and overlay things as we want to per page. Uh, another thing is the page number down here. It basically just indicates what page we're on. And uh, another thing that I added uh, for um, the recipes and stuff like that is it basically can alter, have recipe groups using timers and stuff like that for the item. The only downside for this particular method is the item seems to kind of glitch out a little bit on the bottom as it's technically updating. That's built into Minecraft though, there's not much I can do to fix that because a variable is constantly updating the item. However, you do get the uh, result of the item basically swapping between certain ones and that's uh, supports per slot. Uh, cycling and stuff like that as well if you want to do it per slot or you could do it um, basically uh, have it for just an entire recipe if you wanted to do it that way as well and uh, that just kind of works very similar to how the Minecraft wiki cycles the items and stuff only it's doing it in game and uh, yeah that's basically a couple of the features you can also have uh, say overlay images if there's a certain condition uh, very similar to the how the background works but in this case what we're doing is we're testing if there is a condition of the player holding stone in their offhand and if true then we're basically overlaying an image and the image works on all pages it's not just that particular one unless we specify what page we want it to be only on like the background so basically that's basically how that works so let's go into M creator and I'll show you the system that I have created for the recipe book. So the first thing that you're going to actually need is a basic item and that item um, basically can be set up any way you want it. Uh, I would suggest having the maximum stack size set to one just to be more like a tool and uh, you can set up any of the other settings as you want here. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is basically create your screen for your recipe. And now that screen can be your custom, uh, basically just a cloned version of your custom crafting, um, custom crafting block and you could basically use that and then just do some minor tweaking in the GUI to basically create your actual inventory for your recipe book that would work just fine as well uh, just make sure that you set up the amount of slots that are in that particular inventory so if you have uh, if you add 10 extra slots then you need to set this number to 10 so um, slots start with zero but technically there's only nine uh, it only goes up to an ID of nine in the um, inventory that we have here but because it starts at zero, we need to increase that number by one. So it's actually technically 10 slots we've placed down, not nine. 
So that's basically how that works. And then you want to set your maximum stack size to, you can even you leave it the way it is. Um, in most cases, you want to leave it at 64. So if you have multiple output items per item, then you want to basically set the amount of number of that item for the output as well. All right, so after you've done that, triggers, there's only one trigger, I'll get into that in just a second. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is obviously make our screen. So there is a few things going on in the screen. I'll cover what I can. So every slot has the drop items when not bound to external inventory is closed. Disable that because by default it's going to be set up like this and you just want to disable that and then enable disable player interaction with this uh, slot. Basically what this does is basically prevents people from taking or placing in items to the slot. Uh, you can set this to limit stack input but it's not really required in order to do that and probably not recommended either. Outside of that you can just save all your slots to those exact settings all the way up to your final slot. Uh, you're also going to need two buttons to basically go between pages. So if we were to click on this one, this uh, basically goes to the previous page uh, script that I have for the procedure. And this one here goes to the next page procedure. Uh, for those, we have the, a very basic system that basically tests uh, for the variable number. Now, if you have, we do have actually a global variable run on the player side. So if we go to page, page number, and then we go to number is our basic um, variable that we need. And then it's on player lifetime. So that's the type of variable that it is. Uh, this will reset if the player is basically dies if you want it to be always for the same person regardless if they die then you want player persistent uh, either one will work just fine uh, the last thing that you need to do is basically set this number to one um, all right so now that we got that out of the way we have our basic page number now if you have multiple page numbers what you want to do is you want to basically if you have say three page numbers, then this will work, but there's an easier way of doing that. You want to go and actually test for your uh, highest number. So if it's like you have three pages, then you want to set this less than three, and then you want to increase this by one. And this will basically go up to page two, and then it will basically go, okay, we can still increase. And then when it reaches page three, it won't increase anymore. So if you use the equal to or greater than three, then this will actually go to technically page four, which if you don't have four pages, then it won't work properly. So make sure you only use the less than sign for the next page and the greater than sign for the, um, the previous page which will uh, you want to specify as one and then set this to minus one so basically that's for the this would be for the previous page and to cu customize it what you would need to do if you want to expand your pages you just basically swap these two numbers or these two values around and then it would basically go at, up until your highest number. So how many pages you have and then one minus that. So two, and then it would go to your third one on the final one. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, in our case, we just have it set. We only have two pages, so I only need to set it for uh, our page number variable equals and then page one, and then it will only run on the uh, first page. But if you have multiple pages and you want to alterate that particular variable. And again, this is just our page number that we're editing. So that's basically the previous page and the next page. Um, again, this is what I have set up for the previous page. We only have two pages. But again, you would have to set these two variables up for the previous page if you have multiple pages. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, so that's out of the way now. Um, we have a couple other things that are going on here. We actually have a recipe book background, which I, if I zoom in, I basically overlaid this over the actual texture of the background. As you can see, the background is still there, and I've just basically exported the texture and for the actual background, textured it how I wanted to, and basically all I've done was overlay the diamond block texture and then I've basically brought this back into the game as a separate name uh, for the texture that I want to name it and then I've basically uh, just overlaid that and then I've adjusted a condition right here for when it's displayed and the condition is this one right here all I'm doing for this is I'm testing for the page number now if you want to specify only certain graphical images and stuff per page, then you can do this through testing for the page number, returning true if it is on that page number, and then returning false if it's not. So that's basically how the background works itself. Uh, the other image that we have here is the, the recipe book. Now this is through another condition. I've basically set it up so um, it's running through a icon condition which is a little bit set up a little bit differently uh, it's basically uses the same method uh, in our case I'm basically testing for a different type of condition other than the page number so if the player is holding stone in their offhand then what I'm doing is basically uh, returning true so that's how I was able to get the texture for the book up when I was holding stone in my offhand and then I was returning false if it wasn't so that would basically display the book if it, the player was holding the uh, stone block in their offhand if not then it was not displaying at all and you can stack these uh, layers over each other so uh, you can actually increase that uh, at a higher level and this will be behind the background and if you have it before the background then it will basically show be uh, over uh, overlay that particular texture here so we have the background here and then we have the book here underneath that background and then we'll kind of display over it so that's basically how that works and that consists of the GUI itself. So let's go into actually the mechanics of it and I'll break down how this actually works uh, with the recipes and stuff. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is there is all recipes which are we're using for the recipe book update uh, when in inventory tick. So what we're doing here is this exact same procedure. We're just basically assigning the um, a variable, so a global variable page number text. And this is under our variables, uh, page number text is a string. And again, it's for a player lifetime. And I've just left this as blank. So what this basically does is it uses localization. So if we go to uh, text, there is a block down here, get localization text for key. And then it says our translation dot key dot name. So what you would replace that with is if you go to localization, we have our um, text that we want to get. So in our case, it's recipe uh, underscore book dot page text. So I've basically added a custom entry. You can do that by uh, clicking add localization entry and then you can type in the namespace or the name for the resource key right in this text box here. So I've just basically gone resource or pardon me recipe underscore book dot page text and then I have basically just added a translation for the English language here. You can also translate it into other languages if you set it up this particular way. 
Um, I'll cover this more in depth uh, in the future on how to actually create uh, and translate certain things like this. So basically that's all I'm doing in this particular uh, part right here is I'm basically getting the translation key. So we're basically going page and then I'm getting the colon when I'm creating the text. And then I'm basically formatting the number so it's only a solid number with only using the pound signs uh, for a solid number without any period and then extra pound signs. And then I'm just basically getting the page number so it's um, displaying the number that were on the page. And that basically sets up the page number in the GUI if you want that particular thing to happen. So if we go back to our screen, down here is basically our variable that we have for our page number text. Uh, up here is the recipe name. I will get into that in just a second, but uh, we have two recipes that are basically loading into this procedure. We're just calling the recipe itself into the, the main procedure that we're running from the when item in inventory tick. So the first one that we have is our recipe book screen diamond recipe. And then the other one is the recipe book screen gold recipe. And that goes to these two particular um, uh, procedures that we basically are running. So in here, what we have is our recipe name. We're just getting the translation for that particular uh, page number. So if we go back to translation or localization, we have our page number, and then I'm just displaying the type of text that we want to display for the uh, text in the title of the recipe. So in our case, the page one is diamonds and page two is gold. So that's basically how I've set that up. And again, if you want the translation, it's just under the text um, tab here. And then what we're doing is we're basically going to our item procedure. And then what we're going to do is scroll down until we see the set and then one and then the item and then in slot zero of provided item if it has an inventory. And then we're going to set up our individual uh, or all of our slots to display the items. So we have 10 slots from zero to nine and I've basically aligned them. So we basically display the recipes in that order. So zero and then we have one, two, three, four and it's just basically a gold, full gold recipe and it outputs a diamond. This would be the same recipe that you would need for your custom crafting. So you just basically uh, set it up to display in that order. And then the other one is a little bit more advanced. Uh, this basically has the um, cycling and stuff like that. It's not too much different. We still have to specify the uh, slot numbers and display certain things. Now, if you want to replace a slot with air, then you all you need to do is basically set up a block that just uh, basically sets the the slot to air in that particular slot and there's a couple extra mechanics that are going on here the first thing that we're doing is again we're setting the we're testing for the slot or the page number so this is important always test for your page number first and if we go back to the other procedure you can see that this is also a page number right here so the other thing that we're doing is we're setting the recipe name and that we've already covered. And then we have a item MBT tag. So this is where the item actually technically updates um, constantly. We've gone and created a, a number MBT tag for the item. And then we've basically set it up. So we're creating a timer. Uh, first thing that we're doing is we're testing if the variable is equal to zero. If that's true, then what we're doing is we're setting that variable for the item to 60, which is a reasonable time for the items to cycle through. And then we're testing if it's not zero, then what we're do doing is we're testing if it's greater than zero. And then what we're doing is we're basically getting the same timer variable. And then we're going to get the variable 
of the timer variable and then we're subtracting that by one. So basically this, and then we're setting that variable here to the variable minus one. And if either of these fail, if it's under zero, then what we want to do is basically just set the timer to 60 so it can basically do its thing. And then what we're doing in this particular order, now it has to be in this order or between these ver uh, these timers or it's gonna run into a few issues. I don't know why the group timer basically has to be at the bottom here, but for some reason it bugs out a little bit if it's um, above the slots being placed. So just make sure that you have the group, t group ID for that particular um, below your actual slots that you're setting. So we're setting all our slots and then we're getting a recipe book group ID and then we're setting this to zero, one, and two. And then we finish our recipe slots uh, for basically displaying those items. And then at the bottom of this, uh, what we're doing is we're basically getting the timer uh, for above here. And then what we're doing is we're testing if that's equal to zero if that is equal to zero, then we also want to test if the recipe book group ID is less than our final ID. So in our case, we have two for a final ID. So we're testing if it's uh, less than two. So this would be one. And then what we want to do is we want to increase the group ID plus one, and that will bring it to two. And then when it cycles again through the timer, so in our case, our timer is uh, our requirement for basically updating it, then what we want to do is uh, test if it is equal to two, and then we want to reset it to our first number. So our first number is zero. So that's basically all it's doing for cycling through the items. You can set up multiple of these particular scripts, change the um, group ID, so you could set this to one. You just make sure to update all the group IDs for that particular thing. And if you want to set a new um, slot number, say it's slot five, then you need to set up the slot five for that ID. And then you want to just make sure that these group IDs are the same as your second timer, and then you should be good to go. But outside of that, that's all there is actually to it. It's really straightforward when it comes down to creating a recipe book. It requires very little uh, script to actually do and I will make sure to provide the resources and workspace as well as the procedures on my github for Amprater and you guys can download it explore it and use the script that I've created in this tutorial for your own projects outside of that thanks for watching if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out